Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedrunning video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video I'm going to be building it in the world of Mount Kamarabi which is the world that we got from the expansion pack The Sims 4 Snowy Escape and I'm going to be building a tiny Tokyo city. To be honest, hearing that sentence now out loud it doesn't actually make much sense but this whole entire week since I've been building this little this little lot, I say little, it's actually not that little at all, but the whole week that I've been building this, I've been referring to it in, in my head as Tiny Tokyo City, or like if someone has asked me, oh like what are you building this week, I'll say Tiny Tokyo City, but now actually saying it out loud, it doesn't actually make much sense, but either way, besides the point, you get the gist, this week, I thought it'd be really fun to sit down and try and build a miniature city in The Sims 4, because I've never done anything like this before, now this was partially inspired by, believe it or not, the release of the werewolf pack so if you're not aware last week we got the release of the latest sims 4 game pack which was the sims 4 werewolves and last week of course i did a build it using all the new items that we got i built a big werewolf family home and i really tried to pay as much attention to detail in terms of making the build as messy and as grubby and just as mank as i possibly could and i was saying in that last week's voiceover how much i enjoyed it and so it kind of set me off and i wanted to build something you know, as equally as grubby, as equally manky. And so I thought, why not build a miniature city? And so that's exactly what I did. Now, I do just want to mention, and I have mentioned this before in previous videos when I built in this world, but I've never been to Asia. I've never been to the, the continent or any of the countries within the continent. I've never been to any of the individual cities. So whenever you see me do a build in this world, nine times out of 10, I'm looking at something that I found on Pinterest or something that I've seen in like a film or a TV show or something. I'm just really unfamiliar with this type of building and the kind of architecture I've just unfortunately I've never been and so whenever you see me do a build in this world or in this kind of style nine times out of ten I'm probably going to be basing it off something and this whole entire thing was based off two separate pictures that I found on Pinterest now currently you can see that I'm focusing on the left hand side or what ends up being the left hand side of the lot now I was looking at one picture for this I'll find the picture and I'll pop it up on screen so you can have a little look now if you just look at it you see the building that's got the red roof and it's got the big cat on top completely disregard it I don't end up doing that part of the building of the picture basically I tried it out and it just it weren't working for me and the cat portion of it would have been really difficult to do as well I have an idea of what I could have used because if you're familiar with the build and buy for snowy escape which by the way I say this all the time the snowy escape expansion pack is my number one pack for build and buy believe it or not because it comes with so much good stuff and just the basics as well like you get your basic colors for every single window and door and it's just the, the build and buy for this whole entire pack is chef's kiss. But if you are familiar with it, you might be familiar with this one particular doll. It's like a little statue. When you first put it out of the build and buy menu, off memory, the first swatch is red. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. I probably could have used that on top of the building, but when I tried to do the right hand side of it, like with the red roof, it just wasn't working for me. It just didn't, didn't translate well into the game. And so I completely decided just disregard that portion. And then I found a second picture for what inspired the second, like the right hand side of a lot. When I move on and I start doing the right hand side, I'll make a mental note and I'll remind myself to remind you to show you the picture that I was looking at when we move on into the right hand side. But yeah, I just want to mention that I was looking at some pictures when I was building this. I wouldn't have been able to build it without the pictures because like I said, I've never traveled to this area of the world and I really do hope that I would one day be able to because it just, especially Tokyo as well. Tokyo seems like such an amazing city and also actually, Another thing that I do want to mention. Now, I do feel kind of bad because I want you to build something really grubby this week. I want you to build something where I could really go to town with a live edit menu. By the end of it, the live edit menu and me were best mates. Saying that though, I, I use it all the time, but I use so much stuff that I never really get to place down into a build within this build. And it was just so much fun. And I really wanted it to feel as grubby as I could, as manky and as, I was like city-like. And I'm basing this off Tokyo, but from what I've heard, even though I've never been to Tokyo myself, Tokyo, from people telling me that I've been, is supposedly meant to be one of the cleanest cities that there is possible. Like Everyone that's been has told me how clean and how surprised they were with how well upkeep the city is. And I feel really bad because it's supposedly meant to be this really hygienic, very well kept city. And I've actually made a version of The Sims 4 and it's not that at all. It's quite grubby, it's quite manky. But if I'm being honest, I just wanted to sit down and just have the time of my life with the live edit menu and just use so many different just bits and bobs from all the different worlds and like loads of different rubbish and loads of different pipes and vents and cracks in the walls and just loads of different signs as well. The signs that played such a huge part in this build. I mean, you can see how many I've already got going on. 
at the end, imagine this amount, but times like three or four. There is a lot of signs. I'm surprised I didn't run out of signs. I think I did actually end up using maybe the same sign like once or twice, but I don't think it's that much of a bigger deal because when I did do that, I tried to change the swatches. They looked like different signs and it was just honestly, it was so much fun. And I tried to put so much detail in this build. And honestly, I was really shocked when I came out of recording this and I popped it into my editing program because if someone said to me like, I'll estimate how long this has taken you so far, Honestly, I would have estimated around about four hours, four or five hours, but I came out of my game, I popped my footage into Premiere Pro, which is my editing software, I had nine hours and 31 minutes of recorded footage, and let me tell you, that was the quickest nine hours. Honestly, it felt like it just went by so quickly. I think it's because I was having the absolute time of my life, just making this as realistic as possible and just adding all these small little individual pieces and all these small little touches. Like, I try to really go to town with the details. Like, I really try to pay attention to details with this build and I'm just so happy with the way it turned out and I'm really hoping that you like it as just much as what I do but anyway finally getting on and actually talking a little bit more about the building itself and what this whole entire lot is because I've realised we're so far into the voiceover and I just kind of forgot to mention it so this building or this lot ends up having two apartments one at grocery store one at supermarket kind of convenience store a ski and snowboarding store and then also a karaoke bar as well I kind of want to expand on it. So in terms of the grocery store, I basically wanted there to be somewhere where Sims could go and buy fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, you know, just stuff like that. Stuff that is things that your Sims can actually find within the different worlds and things that your Sims can grow. So that one little supermarket, that one little grocery store alone took me around about an hour and a half because I basically pulled out all these different individual like bananas and, and apples and pears and all these different individual fruits and individually placed them into baskets and rotated them and sized them up and sized them down to make it look like Sims have placed them into these little baskets. But then we also have the convenience store, which if you're wondering where these are, so the convenience store you see just on the left hand side where the green little like banner is over the door, that ends up being the convenience store. In there it's basically a bunch of different fridges and then on the wall, again, it took me around about an hour and a half, probably longer for that one, but it ends up having all of these individual plays like debug menu items, I was more so thinking it was somewhere where your sims would go to buy like, you know, like toilet cleaner or like loo roll or like toilet roll, whatever you want to call it. You know, that kind of just general convenience stuff that you need, like baby wipes and stuff like that. So it ends up being a convenience store. And then we also have a ski and snowboarding store. Now, as we are building in the world of Mount Karobi and as we got skiing and snowboarding within this expansion pack that came with the world, I felt it would be rude not to, to not. And so there's a little ski and snowboarding store in the back corner. And then there is also a karaoke bar because when you originally go into a brand new safe bar, and you visit this lot which by the way if you're curious where i built this i consistently leave the original lot name in the top left corner so if you are curious where i built it and you want to place it into your world in, in your way into your game in a world that is exactly where i built it i always keep it in the top left corner i can't read it because it's far too small for me to be able to read it on my monitor when i'm you know when i'm doing my voiceover i kind of expand the the wavs so i can see the wavs instead of in I can't see it, but you can see it. It's in the top left corner if you're curious of where I built it. And also, it's just built on a 30 by 20. So I'm sure if you just place it onto any 30 by 20, it should be able to fit in quite nicely. I feel like if you wanted to place it down into the world of Sam Ashuno, you could probably place it onto a 30 by 20 in that world. And I feel like it would fit in. But you know, when you originally go into a brand new save file, this lot is a bar. And so I wanted to, of course, keep a little bit of the original the original thing within this build and so I just basically decided to make it into a karaoke bar. It's got a basement so when you first walk in it's kind of got, got the general bar area and then you go through an archway and you go down some stairs and then the first room is the karaoke room so it's got a bunch of stuff from the werewolf game pack. Honestly the game pack inspired me so much. You know the sofas like the really worn kind of like worn out kind of grubby kind of dirty sofa that we got with the new game pack i used it downstairs and then i also used a bunch of different neon lights and the thing is as well with neon lights they're so fun to play around with because you can change the individual colors of each light so some of the lights are like green some of them are blue and some of them are pink and the, just the combination of all the colours, that room downstairs in the basement looks so cool. But there's also a separate room as well, next to that room, which is the karaoke room. 
and next to the I said that in a really weird way. So next to the karaoke room, there's another room which ends up being just kind of like a general games room. There's kind of like a card table in there. There's also a foosballs table. And then, yeah, that is basically what is on and inside of this lot. So we have two apartments, one grocery store, one convenience store, one ski and snowboarding store, and then one karaoke bar. There's a lot going on and it was so much fun. But anyway, getting on and actually talking about what I'm currently doing on the screen, so you can now see that I've moved on and I've started doing the second portion, like the second building on this lot. So like I mentioned, I was looking at a separate picture for this one. I'll find it and I'll pop it up on the screen now. Now you can see that this little area over here with the pink banner above it, this ends up being the grocery store. You might be able to tell because I've already come in and started individually placing it some, I think I used tomatoes and watermelons on the front and then also some aubergines in the back corner in the little in the little picnic basket which by the way if you're curious the circular ones are from jungle adventure they're from the debug menu if your sim has traveled to the world of Selva dorada they'll be able to buy them at a little like market stall and then the one that's kind of got like an open lid that one is from cottage living but it's in the normal build and buy it that one your sims can actually put food in and then they can go and have a little picnic you know you can take it into your sims it will i was about to say in their pockets but in their inventory and then they can travel around different places go to the park and then they can open it up and then they can have a picnic that way but the circular ones are the same ones that i use on the inside and i kind of i use different colors and i size some of them up and for the shelving units in the little like the convenience store that ends up just being just plain black shelves but you'll see that when i move on to it but currently i'm just going around and just adding kind of like a bit of a pavement now i wanted to have it so it's got a little bit of depth i didn't want it to be completely on flat ground and luckily enough i haven't added it yet but luckily enough we have a terrain paint which is from i think it's from eco lifestyle which is like concrete honestly you wouldn't think it but it's an absolute blessing especially when you're trying to do a build like this and it just fits into the world so perfectly but also i do want to mention i have got individual storylines for the two apartments or like the sims that could possibly live in the apartments now of course you can run this as a retail because of the grocery section you can also run this as a karaoke bar or you could just you know you could run this lot as multiple different things but there is of course some residential buildings on top of them and when i was building them i did just kind of follow along two different storylines that i had in my head so obviously the outside it is really grubby it's a bit manky it's not very well upkeeped and so i imagined that the apartments both of them were originally really just exactly that one of them stays like it and i'll talk about that storyline in a second but the other one i imagined that possibly like a university student lives in there now i was only saying it because the apartment is very squished like it's very small and so there's this tiny little computer desk it's got this tiny little laptop there's no tv they've got a cat because on one of the balconies i added it in a litter box and so i was thinking a university student has a cat they live in this building i was kind of going off alongside the storyline of they were trying to get into some student housing in like Rochester, but they didn't quite make the cut or maybe they didn't make it in time or something. And so they had to find somewhere else to live. And so they found this really cheap place in this little area of Mount Kamerabu and they moved into this apartment. Originally, I was thinking that it was probably just a complete dive, you know, there was leaky pipes, there was spills on the floor, there was just cracks in the walls and just general, you know, it's not very well upkeep apartment. But I imagine that the university student has spent so much time popping down to the little convenience store, which is luckily enough just downstairs, you know, buying loads of different bathroom cleaner and like just loads of different stuff to clean the place up. And they've made it into quite a nicely you know well kept little apartment so this first apartment which by the way it's in the front you see these right hand ones which is the grey building and the black building this is where the university students apartment could be and then the other apartment ends up being the complete polar opposite the other one i imagined and i kind of designed to be it for a criminal which is a base game career and funny enough i don't often build houses for criminals even though we've had it in the in the sims 4 for or literally since base game off the top of my head and i might be wrong here but off the top of my head i can only think of one previous build that i've built for a criminal and it was in newcrest and it was for a criminal that lived with their mum and their mum didn't know that they were a criminal and they thought that they was this really sweet sim and it was the complete polar opposite but that's the only one time that i can think off memory anyway that i've built anything for a criminal and so the criminal has this proper dive for an apartment they've got you know them really old like manky looking city living counters that have been used they've got their 
um, they haven't even got a full size fridge, they haven't even got a proper oven or a stove, they end up having a microwave and a mini fridge and then there is also loads of different just stains on the walls and the floors, there's loads of different references to the criminal career as well because if you're not aware, surprisingly we have a lot of things for criminals in the game which sounds really weird but there's so many different suitcases that are filled with money and there's so many different you know like blueprints like they're planning out a massive heist or something and so of course i scattered them all over the apartment they also have a little rooftop like kind of like a secret terrace so you would have seen it it's on the left hand side of this building by the way so the clean university apartment is on the inside of this building over here on the right hand side and then the criminals manky apartment i'm going to term it as that because it's easy to follow along with but the manky criminal apartment is on the building on the left hand side and in there there ends up being a little roof terrace and you can see it just about you see the door at the top on the on the top roof area your sims can travel up there i end up placing down some like newspaper on the floor it also ends up being at some kind of like plants placed around the trim of it that also ends up being i think like a little chair and some more plants in like little pots and i just thought it would be a really cool place for your sims to have like secret meetings or say they're planning something and they don't want anyone to hear them so they go up to the roof i just thought it would be such the perfect apartment for a criminal in the game and so yeah they were the two kind of storylines i was running off a university student that was broke and this was the only rent that they could afford and then also a criminal that just maybe they're a proper penny pincher and they don't want to go elsewhere and they don't want to spend their money and so they don't mind living in a bit of a grubby place but anyway besides the point getting on as you can see i just finished up the exterior of the build so just to kind of make the final touch i wanted to fill in the extra space next to the apartment where the criminal is and so i just end up placing down one of the live edit kind of like live edit menu buildings that we've got from a live edit menu it's one of the ones that you can find in the world of mount Korea Bay, so it will fit in perfectly but now you can see that i've moved on i've started furnishing the first inside which sounds really weird but <laughs> the first shop which ends up being at the kind of like the produce store also a complete size subject but if you can hear that my voice is starting to go a little bit croaky all of a sudden i don't know what it is this year i've got hay fever which i'm saying that surprisingly because i've never got hay fever in in 23 years this is the first time i've ever had it and so my voice is so croaky of an evening and of a morning and so apologies that my voice has got a little bit croaky over time this voiceover but i've already got a cup of tea i've already sorted one out for myself so hopefully that will save it but yeah as you can see i've now moved on into the next portion which is the inside grocery store area so what i basically did is i wanted there to be some like tiers to the shelving units where all the fruit and vegetables will sit and so i originally placed down this table the one that i've used is from the island living expansion pack i chose this one because it doesn't look it doesn't look like it's brand new it looks like it's been around for some time it's a bit it's a bit rough around the edges it's a little bit more of a worn in table than some of the other ones that i could find and so i basically i placed one down which was full size and then using the tool mod I elevated it right down to the floor so it's pretty much on the floor and then I also use the tool mod again and then I've got a second table and sized it down and then just moved it into the other table so it kind of looks like a shelving unit because we have got different shelving units in the game we've got some that we've got from the get to work expansion pack but I just weren't feeling them not for the vibe that I wanted for in here I was imagining like a little old lady owns this shop and I just didn't imagine the the modern ones that we got from the get to work expansion pack to go along with it and so I basically just tried to create my own shelving unit but you can see that i'm now just starting to individually place each one of these like tomatoes and carrots and bananas and strawberries in the end because i do just skip for it because it took me so long like it took me an hour and a half it took me so much time and it was so consuming it was 100 percent worth it don't get me wrong because the payoff of it it just looks so cool as well but individually i think that ends up being a separate basket for lettuce there's one for apples or it might be tomatoes i can't actually say and then there's one for carrots and then mushrooms there's one for blueberries and then raspberries and then peppers and then pineapple as well i think also side subject and this is actually the same thing for emojis i don't know who designed the pepper in the sims 4 but it is so well detailed it's like the pepper emoji you know when you go and look at all the different fruits and vegetables if you've got an iphone this is and you look at all of the different emojis the pepper emoji 
for an iPhone is really detailed. It's the same for the Pepper in The Sims 4. I was looking at it for so long and I realized how detailed it is, but you can see I've just finished placing all the individual baskets and then around them, I also placed some like oversized watermelons and then also some pumpkins as well. Now, currently, as I'm doing this voiceover, I haven't uploaded this build to the gallery. Don't worry, I'm, I'm saying this. It will be uploaded by the time that this video goes up. So when you're watching this video tonight, the, the bill will be in the gallery if you want to go and grab it and place it into your game. But I don't know, and I'm still debating, so I might ask for Discord. I don't know whether to upload this as a bar or if I should upload it as a retail because I want to be able to have you. So if you wanted to, your Sims could physically visit this shop and they could go and buy they could go and buy their carrots or their peppers or their mushrooms or whatever. And well, the way that I'll do it is I'll try and get them so I can set each individual ingredient for sale. I'm thinking I'll probably, now I'm saying this out loud, I will probably set it as a retail in the gallery, but you can either run it as a karaoke bar or a bar. It's basically the exact same thing. The only difference between a karaoke bar and a bar is, is literally the karaoke machine. So I think I'm going to list it as a retail in the gallery. Or of course you could just play in it as a residential. It's completely up to you. But over here you can see that I'm also now placing some more vegetables. This time it's potatoes because I didn't do potatoes. And so I'm using again just the tool mod and the red shelf and just rotating and sizing down, sizing up, elevating and just trying to make it look like all of these potatoes have been individually stacked. I was debating at one point to try and do some like kind of on the shelving unit itself to look like someone's picked up a potato and then you know, you know when you go to one of them grocery stores in like real life and you pick up something and then everything just falls and you get really embarrassed. I was debating doing one of them but in the end I didn't end up doing it but besides the potatoes I also added an extra two baskets. One of them has I think it's lemons and apples in and then the other one has grapes. Now I don't know if you noticed this but when I was doing you know the shelving unit on the other side of the tables basically I was trying to mix the colours because we've got so many different vegetables and fruits in the game but some of them are very similar if you bunch them all together and I didn't want to have loads of different baskets of basically just leaves and so when I was going in and I was individually placing all the different fruits and vegetables I was trying to choose ones that are different colours one another so we've got one which is like blue for blueberries we've got one red one for like raspberries and strawberries we've got one I think we've got like a lettuce one which is green and I basically wanted there to be different baskets but each individual basket has a different colour of produce in it because otherwise it would just look so samey and then I realised I didn't do potatoes and so on the other side I end up placing down potatoes and grapes and then lemons and apples and it's just it's a very colorful place in here and then you can also see above it I placed down these little herbs the ones that I placed down there the smaller ones are from laundry day and then the the bigger ones are from the realm of magic game pack I've really did want to place down some individual bottles of milk because if you're not aware with the cottage living debug menu your sims can buy loads of different types of milks they can milk a cow and get milk that way and when I say different types of milk, I'm not talking like almond and all them kind of milks. It's like different colours of milk. So your Sims can have chocolate milk, strawberry milk. There's some other ones that I'm still yet to discover. And so sometimes when I go for the debug menu, I try and like not spoil myself because I'm still yet to discover all the different things in the cottage living, like the different milks and the different eggs that your Sims can collect. But either way, I really wanted to place down some bottles of milk. But the thing is, you place it into the build and then you go into the gameplay. I'm not joking, within about 10 seconds, they'll spoil, they'll go off. And and I didn't want that to be the case. I didn't want it to be smelly. I didn't want it to, you know, I didn't want them to spoil. And so I placed down at some individual, I think they're called like fizzy drink, like cartons. Basically, if your Sims have the bottle making machine or like the juice making machine, they can make all these different drinks. And so I ended up placing down at just some of the drinks that your Sims can make at the machine within that little grocery produce section. Now, I don't think they spoil because when I came around to playtesting it, I hovered my mouse over it, which you know sometimes when you get your sims to make a, a group meal or something, you can hover your mouse over and we have kind of like a little countdown timer until it goes off. So you kind of, you know how long everyone's got to have some dinner before it goes, before it basically ends up in the bin. Well, basically, when you hover your mouse over something like that, normally it would tell you a countdown until it spoils. But when I was doing it for them individual like cartons of these fizzy drink, it wasn't doing it. So I don't think they spoil, but either way, as you can see, I've now moved on into the next room, which is the karaoke bar slash games room slash bar area. So the first portion, the upstairs portion just ends up being like a blank standard, normal kind of bar. In there, there ends up being at two tables. There is the bar itself, and then there's a bar back as well. Because with the Snowy Escape expansion pack, we've got the bar, and then there's kind of like a decoration thing to place behind it, which we've got with a few of the different packs. We've got one with Strangeville. We've got one with, I think we've got one with, 
I think it was Island Living and there might have been another one as well but it's really nice when when we get a new pack and we get a new bar because I'm not gonna lie Sims 4 team they do love giving us an extra bar and an extra toilet and it's half the time it's unneeded but whenever we do get some new bars it's really nice to have like a little bit of a bar back because I don't know if it's just me but sometimes when I come round to try and play or try and build a bar I find it really difficult because what do you put behind it? There's only so many bottles that you can put behind it before it looks a bit like a cluttered mess. And I know that we've got some individual like bottle decals that you can put on the wall, but sometimes I just, I, I'm not a massive fan of it. But anyway, besides the point, as you can see, I've now moved on into the basement portion of the karaoke bar. And this is pretty much the karaoke room. Now this room, I'm not joking, was by far my favorite to furnish within this whole entire apartment complex, tiny, tiny city, whatever you want to class this whole entire build as, this room Room was my favorite to furnish because it was so much fun playing around with all these different individual lights so you can see i've already placed down two main lights so the main lights are the ones that's got all the individual light bulbs i'm pretty sure that came with the city living expansion pack and then we also got the other one it's kind of got like a little bit of an arrow it's currently the color blue that one is from the mosquito pack and then there's also some small individual ones as well so the individual ones i think are a mixture from like base game some of them are from get to work and also i don't know if you know this but if you ever wondered, I don't know what you would, but basically the neon lights, they can break in the game. So if you place them down into like a teenager's bedroom or something, eventually you'll notice that they, they just completely go out and you have to click on them and then individually repair them. It's honestly, it's such a small feature, but I love them small little re realistic details because myself, I've got a neon light. It's currently sitting above my monitor. It's only battery powered, but that consistently it runs out of battery and it's just very realistic and I love it. But in here, as you can see, I've placed down at some of the artwork that we've got from the latest game pack i was talking last week about how how we got the artwork in this new pack is just so amazing and there's so much potential that you can do for like teenagers rooms and rooms like this like karaoke bars and little like basement rooms i just the artwork just completely made this build but i also used the new sofa that we got from the new pack and i merged it together so it looks like a corner sofa we then also have some individual place cans some of them are rotated to look like your sims have been drinking them and then they kind of like squished it in their hand and then threw it on the floor because i imagine that this is probably like a teenager's hangout or something now this is something that i actually wanted to bring up now you can see that i'm doing the hallway i feel really silly so last week when i was doing my voiceover I was running on literally two hours of sleep. I spoke about it last week, but the new game pack came out Thursday at like 6 GMT. I basically got my hands in the pack and I started recording and it was light outside and I worked all throughout the night, didn't even realize what the time was. And then I ended up going to bed at five o'clock in the morning and then waking up at seven o'clock in the morning. I was literally running on pure rich tea biscuit fumes. I was, there, there was nothing going on in terms of energy wise. I was talking about that skull in last week's voiceover and I thought it was a werewolf skull. Honestly, you couldn't write it. When, and then people started telling me, no, it's actually a cow plant skull. I felt really mugged off. I felt so silly. But now I've now, now I've got like fresh eyes. I've actually been to sleep and I've caught up on my sleep. Now I can see that it's a cow plant. But I felt so stupid because <laughs> I thought it was a werewolf skull because we got it with the werewolf debug. Honestly, it's this kind of thing. You've got to laugh or you'll cry. But as soon as the comments started coming in that it was in fact a cow plant skull, I just honestly, I was rubbing my head. I was like, how did I not even clock that? But I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to blame it on the fact that it came with a werewolf debug. And yeah, I was I was running off nothing last week, so you're gonna have to forgive me for that one, but it's kind of funny if you look back at it. But anyway, besides the point, I did just want to bring it up because I've now been informed by several people. If you watched my last week's video and you noticed it, I've been informed and I now know that it is not a werewolf skull. It is in fact a cow plant skull. But anyway, as you can see, moving on, I just finished up the downstairs basement area. So then there is a separate room as well, which is separate to the karaoke space. And in there, there ends up being like a foosball table, a little card machine, machine little card table station thing and then now you can see that i've moved on upstairs i just did the hallway and now i'm coming back to the actual bar area itself and just finishing it up adding some like different posters and different wall decorations and just those are different like graffiti and neon signs and stuff by the way little tip if you want to layer some posters because i've done it in this build and i just want to explain it if you want to do a similar thing normally when you go into the build and buy menu and you want to layer some posters on top of one another you'll notice that they'll kind of like clip they'll go really weird if you have the tool mod just size one up or size one down it has to be like it doesn't have to be dramatic it can be very minimal and then that way you can kind of have them like overlapped because you would have noticed that I've got 
the the kind of like graffiti wall decal and then i've got a poster of what looks like to be a werewolf on a motorbike and then i've got another poster of like a drinks poster and then there's like another one of like some food and i layered them all using that method because sometimes you don't want to individually place some posters into the game because sometimes that doesn't you want a more of like a, a rugged look and so if you want to do that yeah just use the tool mod and then if you just scale them up or scale them down has to be like slightly doesn't have to be anything dramatic then that way the game recognizes it and then it will overlap whichever one is bigger but anyway moving on as you can see i've now moved on into the first apartment which is the university students apartment so in here first of all the first thing that i want to point out just before i forget and just before say if you want to download this off the gallery and you get really confused you see that i individually placed some spices next to the little hot pot machine now i knew when i was placing them that they don't transfer over to the gallery but they looked really nice and I wanted the screenshots to look really nice as well because I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into my screenshots and so I really wanted them to be there for the screenshots because I was imagining this university student was you know they were maybe writing their final paper or something and they just popped on a hot pot and they was using all these different spices so I placed them down onto the counter when you download it off the gallery if you decide to you might get notified that some items are missing don't be alarmed it's just some spices but yeah I did just want to mention that but as you can see in here this apartment it's very squished don't get me wrong it's not the tiniest thing in the world but it's very squished for a build of mine anyway because normally I like to have like a separate kitchen a separate lounge a separate home office a separate you know all these different rooms and this is basically all of them rooms put into one so I ended up going for the dream home decorator counters and then I also use like a cottage dipping fridge and then there is a separate oven and then stove top and then over here in this little awkward space I decided to place down this desk which is from City Living and something that I did and I don't think I've ever done it before and if I have I completely forgot about it because I felt so smart <laughs> when I did it is I basically I merged the desk into the wall and then you know the cork ball that we've got from base game I merged the desk in so far that there was kind of like a space so you can actually see the wallpaper the cork board, if you size it down slightly, you can slide it in there and then you can put the postcards in it. It just looks so, it just looks, it looks so different and it looks like something that we haven't got in the game. And so I'm going to be using that in future builds. I, I think I might have done it maybe once or twice, but I can't actually remember. But I surprised myself because I wanted there to be some postcards and something to fit out that empty space. And it just worked so perfectly, like the size and then it was just perfect. But in that room as well, there ends up being like a little sofa. I move objects and like tissues and like a little plant onto one of the ledges, like one of the armrests. And then there is also a bookcase. And then that is basically it for that room. But then you would have quickly just seen me do the little entrance hallway. But now you can see me doing one of the bathrooms. So there is a bathroom for the karaoke bar downstairs. You just don't see me do it. So you know where the hallway was, where the archway goes down into the basement. There ends up being a door in there that ends up being like a toilet and a sink. It's very slapdash, very basic. I wanted it to be basic because, you know, it's a karaoke bar. They're not going to have the most beautiful toilet. But I decided to cut it out just because where I'm furnishing two apartments plus a karaoke bar, if I would have shown the furnishing for all the bathrooms, it would have been three bathrooms. And at the end of the day, how many times can I put out a toilet and keep it interesting? So I decided to cut out the karaoke bar one. I decided to keep in both the apartments ones though, because for this bathroom in this apartment and then the bathroom in like the grubby manky apartment, I tried to make them seem quite different. The one that's in like the manky apartment ends up being, you know, manky and grubby and horrible. And so I wanted to show the difference between the two bathrooms. But now you can see I've moved on into it. I was about to say the master bedroom, but to be honest, it is the only bedroom in this apartment. It's quite spacious though. So if you wanted to, you could probably plop down either a bunk bed or a toddler bed into this room as well if you wanted to have like a really small living situation maybe you wanted to have like a single parent live in this apartment you could probably do that where i place down this chest of drawers or is it a wardrobe i don't know if one of them <laughs> where your sims can change their clothes i could probably imagine you having like a bunk bed there or maybe like a toddler bed if you wanted to have like a, a single parent that's running off like next to no money you could probably replace it and make it into you know somewhere where multiple sims can sleep rather than just a single sim or a couple because where it's a double bed you can obviously have two sims but anyway as you can see i've now moved on into the next room which is actually the next building so this is the building on the left hand side and i've started off by furnishing at the convenience store kind of thing so i purposely didn't place any fridges into you know the little produce store with all of the 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 producey stuff <laughs> i didn't place down any fridges into there because i didn't want that to be a bit of a commercial building i was really imagining like an old little lady owns that little store you know she probably has like a farm somewhere in the world of mount Kamarabi. maybe actually maybe 
they are from the farm that I've actually already built because I've already built a Japanese farm on that 50 by 40 lot, I think it is, if you're not aware. I'll put a card on the screen now, so if you want to go watch that, you can. But I basically built a massive Japanese farm. Maybe all of the fresh fruit and vegetables come from that farm every single day. I didn't want it to be like a big commercial thing, and so I purposely didn't place any commercial things, so you know, like a big fridge or anything but I was saving them for the convenience store. So in here, the way that I basically did it is I placed down a bunch of different fridges and then I built a wall and then using one of the doors that we have in the game, I was gonna use the archway that we got from the Snowy Escape expansion pack, but when I placed it down, there was kind of like a bit of gap in either side. So then I ended up placing down a eco lifestyle door. The one that I've used is the metal door, it's kind of like a container one. And basically I sized it down, so then you have kind of like the arch of where the door would lay in the wall, but when you size it down, obviously you can't see the door. And then that way I was able to hide it within the fridge. Now I do wanna say, I don't think the fridge works. When I came around to place it my sim couldn't get into the fridge it's more so for like the aesthetic but i'm sure if you wanted the fridges to work you'll probably just delete the door remove the wall and then you you know you're good but i just i really liked the way it looked it looked very built in it looks very custom and that's exactly what what is it to be but you can see that i'm currently going around and individually placing so much stuff i don't even know what i place so I, <laughs> i'm actually trying to look at it and trying to evaluate it because i was just doing it and i was just it was so much fun. I placed down loads of different fertilizers, which we got from Cottage Living Expansion Pack. And I purposely placed down one of each individual color. So if you look at them, there's one that's blue, there's one that's green, there's one that's red. And I tried to make them look like they were cans. So like cans of baked beans or cans of soup or something. We also have some coffee pods. We also have some size down little like... I don't even know what they're like little spices. We also have some bird feed. We also have some like hamster. You know, when you change your hamster when you was a kid, if you had a hamster, you know, like the hay that is, is it hay? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the bedding. <laughs> we also have one of them. We just have so much stuff. We have individual bottles as well. And then over here, I wanted to do a separate shelving unit for the things that I didn't end up placing onto the main shelves. And I was thinking that this could be like a reduced section. Do you know when you go to like Tesco's or Sainsbury's or wherever you do your weekly shop and you always find that there's a reduced section and it will just be like random stuff that is going to go out of date on the day that you're buying it. And it normally has like reduced, like if you go to Tesco's, I know that Tesco's label is like yellow and they have like a massive reduced sign all over them. I basically wanted to have like a little reduced section in this convenience store. So over here you can see that I sized down at some of these signs that we've got from get to work and they look like they've got a percentage on i was reading that as this is like a discounted price this is this is your reduced section in this convenience store i just thought it was a really nice touch but i also made the shelving units on the other wall a little bit custom so what you would have seen me do is i placed down these like plain base game shelves and then I use them as kind of like my guide and then once I'd finished individually placing all the items down onto them shelves I then got the same shelf again and then with the tool mod I was able to rotate it 90 degrees so instead of laying like horizontal it then went if you're talking about like portrait wise do you know what I mean like instead of being landscape it then went to portrait that's the only way that I can think of how to explain it right now but then that way I was able to move them into the wall and it looks like a custom built-in shelving unit I just really like that but now you can see it. i'm just going around and finishing up the convenience store i was personally imagining like a teenager working in here and so you'll notice that next to the counters where the till is i placed down like a, a bag that looks like it could be owned by a teenager i just used one of the base game bags it's actually one of the only bags that we've got in the sims 4 currently but it's got like a skull on it and then we've also got some like mops behind them and like cones i also placed down a little sign to say you know when they've mopped the floor if they ever do so because i imagine that if a teenager works here, they're probably not going to be doing that much work. I imagine that they've probably been left to run it from the owner and then they just sit on their phone all day and play like a Flappy Bird or something. I don't know why I said Flappy Birds, that, that is a very gone and forgotten game. But I imagine that the teenager that works in that convenience store doesn't do much work. But yeah, I placed down behind them like some cones and then some signs. So when they do mop the floor, they can put like a wet floor sign. And I just, I love that room so much. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on into the next room which is the skiing and snowboarding shop. So in here, it's really annoying, but unfortunately I wasn't able to use, you know the skis and snowboards that you get with the Snowy Sea expansion pack, the ones that your Sims can actually use on the slopes. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually place them down into this room, which is funny because it's literally a room dedicated to skis and snowboards and there is none in this room, but there is a reasoning for it. Now, I don't know why, I think it was something to do with the way it was made, but a lot of the times, if ever I want to rotate something that's not meant to be sitting on a wall, I'll use a tool mod and I'll rotate it that way. 
for some reason, I think it might just be like the blueprint of the way they were made or something, you cannot, or maybe it's just me, I cannot, for the life of me, seem to rotate a single snowboard or a single ski in the game. I basically, before I recorded this room, I came in, I placed all of them out, like all lined them up, I selected them all, I rotated all of them, none of them moved, all they did was elevated. And so, unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually place some into the into the shop itself, but I made it look like there were some. So we do have a decorational thing, which you can just about see on the left hand side, which is loads of different skis and snowballs, kind of like in one unit. I merged two of them in together, and then I also found these parenthood, I think they're meant to be skateboards, but I found some of them and I put them on the wall as well. I mean, to be honest, it does the job. It does look like snowballs because some of the different snowballs that we have in the game do have some quiet does, like they have some like vibrant designs on them. I think we have some of them that are like camo designs and I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what they are, but I feel like if you were to squint or if you just didn't know that they were meant to be skateboards from the parenthood game pack, you would think that they were you would think that they were snowboards. But yeah, it's really cutting that you can't actually rotate them. I think it I, I have found separate rooms in the gallery as well because when I was trying to rotate them and they were only just elevating, I did have a little search on the Sims 4 gallery to see if anyone had uploaded any rooms with it just, you know, just them rotated. And I found some that they would rotated within and then I placed them down into my into my build and then it just they wouldn't be rotated. I don't know, it was really strange, but either way, as you can see, I've now moved on and I've now started furnishing the final room, the final area of this whole entire tiny Tokyo city thing <laughs> and I'm starting off by furnishing at the entrance hallway to go into the criminal's manky apartment so from the offset I want you to be able to tell that this was going to be a bit of a grubby place because on the outside of the door it ends up having loads of different like letters and loads of different posts and loads of just different grub that looks like that I say grub but you know like grubbiness that has just been sitting there for days and they just you see it so many times in like films or TV shows where there'll be a character and they live in an absolute pit and they just have so many letters or so many vouchers for like pizza places or something being thrown under their door or all around their door and they just haven't picked it up because they just they can't be bothered and I just wanted to give the idea into this apartment so as you can see I've now started furnishing at the bathroom so hopefully you can see a difference in between this bathroom and the university students bathroom because I tried to use this new tile which we got from the new game pack it's kind of got some like cracked areas on it I also placed down some rugs surprisingly they're from the strange bill game pack but they're basically spills I placed them down into there I also placed some like cracks into the walls and just just mankiness, basically. I've said the word manky a lot in this voiceover, and I'm now realising that it might not be a commonly known term <laughs> in, in a lot of places in the world. Manky is just gross, basically, long story short. But now, anyway, as you can see, I've now moved on into the little, kind of like the home area where your kitchen is, where your dining room is, and just all your kind of like living stuff. Now, I did originally place down this oven, which is from the Dream Home Decorator Game Pack. Funny enough, never used it before, but I placed it down into this apartment, and when I got my Sim to play test, it it worked but the thing is where there was already an oven in the university students apartment my sim would favor that one so instead of using this little microwave oven my sim so you know sod that i'm gonna go and actually use the oven that's in this other apartment because i can just walk into it and so i did end up replacing that little portable oven if you want to call it that i ended up replacing it with just a microwave instead so then there ends up being a microwave as well as a little coffee station in the kitchen area and then i use the counters which are from city living the kind of like grubby ones they're a bit manky they're a bit old but then on the other side of the wall over here as you can see i placed down at some like holes and some pipes and some like, curtains the curtains are from again the new game pack it basically looks like a bed sheet that someone has kind of put over the, the blind to keep out the light. I was thinking, you know, it works perfect for a criminal because they probably don't want anyone to be able to see in to their apartment. But then I also tried to place down some some kind of like hidden objects. So you will see like under the armchair, I applied to place down like a little briefcase that's filled with money. And then on top of the wardrobe, we move on to the next room. I tried to place down like in, all these like individual boxes. And I think there might be another briefcase in there as well. But unfortunately, when my sim came around to place this it because the suitcase that I used underneath the armchair my sim couldn't actually sit on the armchair I just ended up moving it from underneath the armchair and just placing it somewhere else within this little communal living area I say communal this little living area situation but now you can see that I've moved on and I've started decorating and kind of like I say decorate I've started building 
the upstairs portion to go to the penthouse or go to I say penthouse if you lived in London and you was buying this flat they were classes as a penthouse even though me and you both know this is not a penthouse it's just basically an area on the roof that you can walk but if you if you're trying to buy or if you're trying to rent in London you know me and you know if you've ever looked that's the, but that's the terminology that they will use but I basically wanted your sims to be able to actually get up there because I was imagining you know this sim that is a criminal they have all their secret meetings up there they don't want anyone to hear what they're talking about all these different heists that they're planning they don't it's like top secret information so I thought perfect place a rooftop little little meeting spot but now as you can see I've moved on into the bedroom and in here I decided to use the debug bed which is from Eco Lifestyle. Now let me tell you this bed is very unused by me just because it is so grubby it is so gross and I just love it for this build it just fitted in so perfectly into this apartment I'm pretty sure if you wanted to buy this from the debug menu it's 25 simoleons I'm pretty sure a pizza is more than this bed in the game and so of course it fitted in so perfectly into this bit of a bit of a grubby, bit of a grimy kind of apartment and then I also placed down at some other items which you can find from the debug menu from Eco Lifestyle like the armchair, the TV as well, the TV by the way, the TV that I've moved objects onto that chair, it works 100%, your sims can relax on the bed and watch a film, whatever they want to watch and then I also placed down at this new desk that we got from the new game pack, again it just fits in so perfectly and then that is basically it for this video i'm gonna go around and make some final touches i end up adding up a little mouse hole so in live mode there is a mouse or like a rat whatever you want to pass it as roaming around in this bedroom and it just it is a final perfect little finishing detail for this build but yeah anyway apart from that that is basically it for this voiceover so i'm gonna end the voiceover right here so as always you guys can download this build via the gallery my origin id is jessica pi or you can search with the hashtag Jessica Pye YT or just the hashtag Jessica Pye. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in my next Sims 4 speedwinning video. Bye guys.